Rams before and Rome Baptiste. So I'm not sure there, but if we look over to uh, the team, uh, the players mm-hmm. who are on that, it's Anime Save Me, who is the captain on that glaive. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be the Rome glaive this time. Mm-hmm. Flex big glaive indeed. But, you know, uh, having Delphire with uh, the Lyra, you know, you have the bright bulwark. So uh, you have to time it right so that you will neutralize any threat that Anime Save Me will get to your team with uh, the Afterburn. Yeah, and oh, it's Arsene's actually making an aggressive push up in the lane here, and Han Yeager's already and already down to half health, and Lyra there as well <laughs> with the uh, <clears throat> Arsene's technique to help slow them down. But in response they to that, Anime Save Me has gone deep into the enemy jungle there, knowing that Arsene's are going to make that full team rotation into their own jungle, playing the top half of that. Meanwhile, Baptiste able to really, or I think, as Luxura would like like me to say, Baptiste, Baptiste. <laughs> uh, clearing out <laughs> that facts of his own, and they're just going to move up into lane and help out Han Yeager's at the moment. So, you know, I think good job by Anime Save Me to go to the backs of uh, Arsene's there to take at least something away from that and not be a complete Yeah, loss. but Rosie has to be Ooh, careful here. Hey. Oh, and there goes <laughs> the, 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 the I mean, the afterburn. Rosie, Rosie actually survived that one. No follow-up. But then Grumshaw got into Kane Jagger. Kane Jagger dies and now official Han doing a duel with Grumshaw. Grumshaw dies. Yeah, and what looks like really Elite 8 able to secure that kill, but Grumpjaw coming out of nowhere and able to pick up the first blood instead. It was a trade out one for one at the end of it, but I really thought Elite 8 were going to be able to make a play out of that one with Anime Save Me coming around from the back with the Afterburn. And I, I think it shows that we might be seeing a fairly close game between these two. What do you think? Yeah, fairly close game, but you know, you know, I have my I have my um, eyes on Anime Save Me for making the plays with the Afterburn. So I I think I'm going with the lineup for. Oh, speaking of yeah. that, he goes in with Afterburn onto Roasting Me Toasty, and that's just an easy pickup kill for Han Yeager's, especially with the minions bit to help out in this early game. But we can't count out uh, Arsons yet as Stanty starts. Picking a fight with official Hein in this jungle, really just trying to get control of this mid tree amp right now. It looks like anime save me, maybe in a bad position, needs to be careful not to get caught out by that grump jaw because you will get slowed down. But it's going to be Hun Yeager's with a rotation down to the tree end. Oh, grump jaw actually gets the tree and Hun Yeager's going in for the grump jaw dies and Hun Yeager oh, backs away from that one. What do you think about uh, the lineup of um, Artisan so far? Hmm. <clears throat> You know, I was happy when I saw them making that Lyra pick as opposed to the previous matchups. It shows that they learned why and they could understand. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's whether Arsene's uh, confident in playing with that, around that Lyra comp. I mean, this could work out for them, but they really have to team fight here. And it looks like for the most part, they get keep getting caught out on their own. And when it comes to that Glaive having the utility with the Afterburn and then the damage coming out from either Batiste or uh, Gwen seems to be enough for Elite 8 to kind of go in these 2v2 uh, two situations. But it's going to be Anime Save Me diving in a bit deep. Yeah, I agree. But you know, and uh, with with the current lineup, you with the Lyra, as I, I was telling earlier, you really have to uh, time the right forward really well for you to neutralize any threat that uh, the glaive will get to your team. Because you know, one good afterburn can cost you one teammate that fast. Yeah, and I think it's also going up against the team comp that Elite 8 has built up. It's kind of a good choice there with the burst damage that's going to be coming out from Han Yeager's, especially once they pick up that tension bow. They haven't gone back to base yet, but, or maybe once, but they're still sitting on that book of eulogies and double weapon blade, uh, followed by a swift shooter. But I can really see once Gwen picks up that... Uh, Tension bone, you can really see them feeding the gold into Gwen right now, or even letting Gwen go down to the jungle. And that's uh, official Hind giving over some farm to Han Yeagers, who is seeing actually behind uh, Kestrel. So Kestrel's been doing uh, the same tactic as we look over now into the enemy jungle. So both these teams really focusing on their uh, carries getting ahead right now. But what do you think about the itemization coming in from these stars? I mean, with, with okay, hold that, hold that. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, okay, as I was saying, what do you think about the itemization uh, coming in from uh, DD Stars? I mean, you usually uh, build tension bow for uh, Grump Jaw early game for you to be able to burst down uh, Hunt Gakers or any carry. Well, I think that <laughs> it looks like uh, I, I, I'm too much of a play-by-play -play caster to <laughs> do that. But I think it really is Dante Stars could do with a bit more damage, but they are going for a more utility build. It's kind of almost similar to when they go utility okay. glaive. Uh, but in this sense, it looks like he might go towards the Storm Guard soon. And you talked about maybe a tension bow would have been a good pick. If he hasn't mm -hmm. started building towards that at this point, I think maybe it's a bit too late and he's just going to have to go for the Aftershock instead. Yeah, I mean, uh, also look at uh, look at Batiste and uh, uh, Glaive. They 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 built uh, the early armor for the Grump Jaw, so you know you won't expect much damage coming in from them for now. Yeah, and we see a one shot, one kill being opened up on Anime Save Me. Maybe just to gain the five stacks on there for the adrenaline and uh, able to not use up so much energy, which will help Roasty Me Toasty just be a bit more uh, sustainable in this lane, especially with the help of Lyra there. But we really haven't seen uh, any engagements coming out from Artisans too much. It's definitely been a bit more Elite 8 playing this one aggressively, and it's how I said they should play with the team comp they have. So it's good to see them doing that so far. But we'll have to see how it plays out from here. Yeah, I mean, Timmy is looking for a good afterburn. Oh, there goes the afterburn. Get Kentra. And there goes the Ace is high. Get Kentra. Rose Timmy told you about to die. And he sees our enemy Timmy back. Stop now. Okay, so I'm getting started. Grump Jaw. Stop is very angry. Oh, they get out of me. Save me from the turret. But they also trade in for Batiste. Well, I guess that's not too bad considering that the Roma on the side of Elite 8 is the Glaive and was able to take out the jungle. And that's the thing that Deity Stars on the Scrum Jaw is almost like a second Roma at the moment, just being a bit tankier. And of course, going to go up to now being level 6, having that stuffed ability will kind of be more so utility rather than Deity Stars going in for damage. And Rosy Mitosi is kind of going to have to be the one on the back lines to deal that damage out for that team. And Doubtfire's job is really just to keep the, uh, everyone on there nice and healthy and alive. And as you said, you pointed out earlier, for Bright Ball work, of course, you do need to watch out for this Glaive because he is the key to initiation for Elite Eight. Mm. Yeah, and look at the itemization coming in from DD Stars too. I think it's going for utility rather than the burst. I mean, it. it I mean, for me, it's better to have. Oh, but there is another after, but good after, but and Rosie Mitosi got stuck sandwich in between. Now Lyra backs away from that one. Ace is high. Miss enemy save me. Get in this turret, but oh my god, it was just too fast. You know, it was it was really good after from from enemy save me. You know, I understand Deity Stars, I dare, but uh, with anime saving, you're gonna go in with Afterburn, that's gonna be the, uh, well, the kill going over, the double kill, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, not a double kill, but both the uh, two of the players on our sense going down as well as the turret of the Elite 8. So Elite 8 with a strong start here, now seven kills to two over, mm -hmm. and 19.7k gold over to the 16.8. So with a fair gold lead there at the moment, I'm just wondering how uh, Deity Stars needs to prioritize using the stuffed ultimate. He goes for the Glaive, and I understand that because Glaive is in there causing havoc, but it's mm -hmm. a bit similar to a situation when you've got a hero diving on the front line, it doesn't always mean that's the hero you should go for. Just because mm -hmm. they're up in your face, it's more of like you see that hero and instinct tells you you need to take mm -hmm. care of them. But really, I think Deity Stars would be better off trying to stuff uh, the Baptiste or Han Yeagers, the ones who are actually on the back line doing the damage, rather than mm -hmm. just going straight for Anime Save Me, who is actually the Rome on the side of Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I agree, and I, I think that the, prior, the, prior, the priority for Grumpjaw here is to uh, eat Baptiste, because Baptiste does almost all the CC for, for uh, Team Elite. Oh, and there goes the Hangria again. 
Yeah, you see him going on to the same target there, going on to the Glaive, and then Glaive just gonna... Uh, it doesn't really matter for Glaive, yeah. he's tanky enough, and you see Official Hunt mm -hmm. and Animate Save kind of able to clean up the rest because they weren't targeted mm -hmm. as much, and it kind of falls apart for Arsons in that sense as they lose their mm -hmm. second turret, and maybe even a third hair as they push him with the Ace yeah. of Minions. This is a fast game for them with uh, three turrets in under 10 minutes. This is a fast game. You yeah, know, just I, I, that I, 10 minutes action. Yeah, as I was saying, with Grumjaw, you have to build the damage or the tension bow for you to be able to burst Gwen or either Batiste. It will be hard for you to burst Gwen because of her skedaddle and her kit, so you go for Batiste. Hello? Yeah, and we now see uh, is actually the breaking point already picked up as a third weapon item on uh, Gwen and you were just talking about Gwen being so hard to lock down it's going to be even harder for them now especially with Kestrel behind in farm at this point just slightly now at 103 so that got turned around from earlier and Gwen now at 119 but they might be able to steal oh, this one as they go in but it doesn't yeah, look, look like a Grumjaw just going to dive into that one and is going to fall to the Gwen and it, oh Roasting Me Toasty might pick up the kill on Official Hind but the life steal is too much meanwhile Gwen able to pick up that ace for the team and that's Elite 8 winning another fight there and I was just talking about the ionization when Roasting Me Toasty is now quite a far bit behind mm -hmm. Hun Jaegers who really when I talked in the draft phase I said the team with Lyra should have that window of opportunity to play with you don't need to build so much defense and you can go yeah. for more attack and maybe that would be why it would be nicer to see Grumpjaw pick up a tension bow and not worry about early game defense as much because you have the Lyra there to help you. You really mm -hmm. need to utilize that Lyra to get you through the early game and then you can snowball into the late game because now we see uh, Rosimi Toasty only with a Sorrow Blade and Breaking Point. Meanwhile, Hun Jaegers with that uh, Poison Shift, Sorrow Blade and Breaking yeah. Point. It's really just too much for them to deal with but i think yeah. other than that it really can come down to the engagement so deity stars maybe need to work a bit more on pr uh, target prioritization yeah i agree and you know on jaegers having uh, the poison shield actually counters the heals coming in from lyra and uh you know uh when you <laughs> i mean you, you shouldn't you shouldn't miss the bright forward it's it's really a crucial game and it was apparent in the early game when anime save me was ganking and then now they're getting in the they're getting the crystal sentry here with one life remaining yeah, and it looks like i agree with you there that because Lyra didn't use the Bright work earlier and didn't use it then, actually uses it later. It does stop uh, the rest of Elite 8, but only for a bit. And I think it might actually just help Arsene scale that one safely. But you could see the, I think, active camo might have stunned up the rest of Elite 8. Arsene's need to be careful here not to fight Anime Save Me going in once again. And then there's going to be the disdain onto Lyra, who gets stunned up and can't do anything to help her team, as Grumpjaw is going to be the next one to fall. And Elite 8 on the Runaway here as I mean Lee Aid pushing in as Arsens run back into their base. Uh we've also seen this play in VJ where I mean Sydney plays Glaive. I mean he's he is really good with playing Glaive. Oh there goes the one shot one kill misses. Ooh, that How was a great yeah. That's a great use of the ultimate there from Official Hind to really push away Roasty Me Toasty, or they might have given away the kill over there. And it could have been a turnaround point for Arsons, but Arsons still look like they're chasing a fair bit. Uh, they're starting to back off now, and there's an echo pickup onto Glaive. I mean, it is the oh, utility oh Glaive. <laughs> it's going to have that afterburn up even more. So I, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing. I mean, usually when we see utility Glaive, it's the CP Glaive, but. Um, this is for Rome Glaive, so I guess you have that <laughs> opportunity to pick up Echo. It's especially when you're playing Glaive uh, Rome, you're not yeah. you have no damage. You're basically relying on that afterburn, and it's kind of why I personally don't enjoy the uh, pickup when I see Utility Glaive, just because mm -hmm. it's that one. <gasps> oh, totally. oh. One. A kill comes out by Roasty Mitosi able to steal away the gold mine. That's going to help them catch up just a bit because at the moment they're 10k gold behind and they needed that. That's 26.7 over to 20, uh, 36.8k gold of Elite 8. So, you know, do you think that uh, Arsens can come back from this one or was it is it too late, too long? Well, um, I think they, they can still come back if they prioritize their targets. 
because they 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 always go in for the grave rather than the petite and, and the Gwen. Wait, oh, okay, hold that thought. And they are looking for an engage, but no, they back away from that one. And they are getting uh, Elite Eight is actually invading their jungle, denying them all of their farm. Yeah, and that's really gonna hurt us uh, since even more. So Elite Eight really just have control of this match as they are kind of pushing towards Kraken vets now coming up onto the fold. And I think they're more than likely to turn their attention there or wait for a gank onto. Uh, the enemy team because there's I no. I think they're ganking here. Yeah, there's no more uh, crystal miners. That crystal sentry, I believe it's called. Okay, but, there goes uh, the bright You see the bright ball work used early to stop anime save me, but it's not going to be there to save yourself later from the afterburn as uh, Hanyeg is <laughs> going in and they're just taking out the team as you see Hanyeg is and official Hein able to stand back and deal the damage. That's an easy ace, quick clean up. And yeah, they're closing in the game now. I mean, you, with the echo, it was so. I think it's a wise pickup with uh, the echo coming from an anime save me because you get two afterburns in a short amount of time. You basically disable two teammates, two, two, two enemy, two enemy heroes. Yeah, definitely well played by the side of Elite A. An anime saved me on that glaive to really jungler is, you know, that's going to be the scarf jungle, which is fairly common as well. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not so uncommon for scarf jungle. It's more just the fact of who they're going up against looks rather yeah. scary. <laughs> Agree. And I also, uh, I also think that um, they have to, uh, artisan here has to evade or has has to evade fights in the jungle because they, you, you see Kasha is going to invade now. The whole the whole elite eight team is going to invade now, so they have to push in the lane and get some pressure there. So you know we see official Heim harassing them. What do you think? Uh, well, is actually anime save me able to? Uh, tree ant there and this is really a good play one to do because you have the Koshka and two because mm -hmm. you have the Lyra there to play aggressive and invade as a whole team there was no rotation to the enemy backs however or at least uh, in saying that elite eights backs by Arsene so mm -hmm. elite eight being fairly successful with that one now able to move on to the middle tree ant and this is really whether you, elite a is going to be able to utilize that Lyra and Koshka and if they do I'm sure it's just such a good draft for them Mm -hmm. Well, what could go right here is um, the uh, DT stars to keep pressuring the lane, and then uh, oh, oh, he, but but one moment, uh, Rosie Mitoli just gets out there. Official time that around there is a twirly, twirly, twirl kill. Baron, and that's gonna be first blood going over onto Baron, and this is what about about uh, it being kind of like DT stars or please scarf and Baron being kind of vulnerable especially to a Koshka and you can imagine once even uh, Lyra gets the um, arcane passage that's gonna provide a easy way for them to get onto the enemy hero even more so hello hello might be yes, cutting hello. off hello okay hello. I'm, <laughs> sorry I'm just I'm, I'm, my, my, my internet <laughs> Anyway, yeah, um, well, going back to what I was saying earlier, DD Stars has to help, has to help his teammates to pressure the lane because Koshka will keep on invading their jungle, so they, they have to trade it off with the first turret. What do you think? Yeah, I think Deity Stars does have to keep up that pressure in lane, I agree with you there, but you've got to worry about Koshka just being able to have all this free reign early on and we know how strong Koshka is early game but it means she's gonna have just that much more of a power spike just being items ahead of Deity Stars as they move on. We now see Koshka actually going in and stealing that one away from Deity Stars I believe and just look at the Deity damage they put the down onto Deity position. Stars as they get caught out by Anime Save Me and you see Dalfire trying to rotate around but as you said earlier Finn just not mobile enough of a Roma to really help out in those kind of situations. I understand the fifth pickup. You want to have that polite company to provide a bit of defense to uh, your carries like right now. But whether it's going to be enough is the question. As official hind jumps in and almost takes out Roasty Me Toasty. Yeah, I agree. You know what would have been better pick as a Catherine? For that uh, for... Roasty Me Toasty should go back. I'm so worried for him. But oh. they're gonna, Elite Eight going to try push in and they actually managed to hold the defense on us inside. 
Yeah, as I was saying earlier, uh, Catherine could have been a better pick for for um, Team Artisan so that he can stun Koshka. But you know, this is the early game power of the Koshka spells with the Gwen, and Gwen is uh, near completing that breaking point, and now they are invading in the jungle. And now Zelfire gets caught out, official Heim targets Zelfire and just gets eliminated. Now Rosie Toasty. Okay, now they're invading the jungle, official Heim getting that tree and how about you? What can you say about this game so far? Well, it's there's not so much of a gold lead, but I mean we're only four minutes in. It's almost a 2k gold lead with uh, LEA being at 9.8k over to the 8.5 uh, for the side of Artisans. But you can see how that will slowly increase uh, as they continue to steal farm away from Deity Stars. I think it's just going to put Deity Stars in a real bad position because right now Deity Stars and Rosy Mitosi actually sharing this lane farm and you look over to like Han Yeagers, who's 10 farm uh, ahead of Roasty Mitosi, sitting at 44 over to the 35 of uh, Roasty. So it's really about how it's going to continue on. I think Elite 8 with mm -hmm. a strong start, but as expected, it just mm -hmm. depends whether Arsens can slow that down from here or if Elite 8's just going to get ahead of themselves and continue to push this one through. Mm -hmm. And I also think for Official Heinz itemization, he picked up an early metal jacket. Oh, and there goes the aftershock. I'm waiting. I was actually waiting for the early aftershock because uh, for for the scarf. Yeah, and there goes. Oh, look at look at that! <laughs> look at that damage coming from uh, Baron. It looks like one fort, but you know. The sustain save them, and there goes the Twirl Turret. They're wanting, they, they, uh, Elite 8 is wanting this turret. Anime Sammy just gets burst, uh, gonna burst. No! He survives that one. Hunt Jaeger's doing the damage to a uh, Finn. Yeah, great use of the Fountain Bear by Anime Save Me yeah. to get out that one just barely. But uh, you can see that the lane focus is definitely... The, and I think it's very respective to Elite 8's general playstyle, always being a je objective focus. And they're either going for kills to get objectives, or they're just going straight for those objectives. And that's why you saw, even if it's just a small bit of armor, the Light Jacket coming up from Koshka, knowing that they want to focus down this Baron, and that's going to be their target. And they've done a good job so far, because Baron, he's been able to hold off, but just barely. That turret is surely going to fall in just a second, with Dal Dalfar being the only one up in lane. But Desi is actually going to rotate up, and Koshka jumping in under turret does land a fair bit of damage, and goes fairly low, but you can see the Imperial Sigil going to keep them just alive. And they're going to take that first turret as Roasty Mitosi makes it back up to lane, but not in time. Yeah, that's that's all, that's uh, that's a good call coming in from um, Han Jaeger and Official Hein and Anime Saving. Fairly good. So you, you that's the power of the early game. You you get that first turret and then no, you, you with with Akashka you will be able to easily invade the jungle now that you have zoned them out of their first turret. They basically have no defense upon the entrance of the jungle. Yeah, it definitely allows for a bit more team rotation by yeah. the side team of Elite 8. Who, uh, and as the team, it's just going to be that much harder to deal with because so far we've just mostly seen ganks coming up from official hunts. Uh, but you can imagine if they catch out Scarf on his own, he's really going to have no escape from that. He has tier 1 boots, but Scarf is a hero, no utility really in his kit other than maybe slowing down the enemy. Uh, might help him out a bit, but we see Elite 8 trying to take this gold mine. It might get stolen, but no, gosh, go there with the secure. There's going to be the Ion Cannon dropping in. Uh, Fountain is used on the side of Elite 8. Is it going to keep Koshka alive? Oh no, Koshka is in a full scarf, actually able to do the damage, and it's going to be Elite 8 on the run now. As Dante Stars takes up that kill, and then moving on to Anime Save Me, it's going to be Baron with a rocket jump. Uh, I always call it rocket jump, my bad. Rocket jump. Uh, with, uh, Jump jets to get in there and get the kill, but oh. talk about the kill. Juan is coming out of nowhere with that uh, passive on Gwen as well as the tension boat, just able to do so much damage against the scarf who only has uh, actually has no uh, armor, but is more so focusing on that Koshka. Which uh, going to that point, you know, <laughs> who do you do you think that makes sense? Koshka being the one in the front lines, but you can't really forget about Han Yeager's. How do you feel about that? Well, um, they shouldn't have gotten the gold miner yet. That's what I thought. Uh, like it was too risky. So you, you cannot you cannot ignore the damage that Saren has, especially now with the sorrow blade and you no know, the tension bow now. 
and also scarf with the slow end. You know, you 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 have the scarf ultimate fanning flames, and then it it is an ultimate slow. But hold that thought. That oh oh, actually get anime save me there in the porcupine water hit. They're backing away from this one. Surprising, it was really a surprising hook coming up from Delphire. Yeah, and you can see that. Elite 8 now having to be a bit more respective of the damage coming out. They weren't quite able to snowball it with the Lyra, but they've done a fairly decent job here as we see them ahead in Golda, but uh, we'll have to talk about that in just a second as Anime Savior goes in with the Arcane Passage. It's going to be Baron trying to get away from an official high, but official high might fight for kill. Who's going to get it? They're both going to trade out for the kills. Meanwhile, Scarf going to fall to Hun Jaegers and Dalfa are going to be the last one left on Arsene's having to run away from this fight, but I don't think he'll get out with his life as Hun Jaeger is on the chase and ready to get the kill. There's the quibble, but Hanyegas with enough speed to dodge out that. It's actually going to go over to Anime Save Me as a cheeky little first pickup kill for them. I mean, Rome's need kills as well. <laughs> it's not kill steal, it's kill secured. Kill secured. <laughs> well, good job to Official Hind. Did you see what he did? He went back to Scarf and both Baron tries to burst him, even if it costed, if it, if it costed his life. So that uh, Hun Giggers and the uh, enemy save me will eliminate any any threat at the back and just basically pick off any 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 dying heroes. Any stragglers. <laughs> stragglers. <laughs> Yeah, and we now see a broken myth game picked up on Koshka, but I'm respected to that there is also the Echo that got picked up on Anime Save Me. We've seen a lot of use of Echo on Roams recently, and it's it's really good to see it uh, being utilized as an item because we saw how much uh, work it did in the previous game with Glaive Roam, able to always use that uh, after a burn or at least use it twice. And then in a previous matchup, we saw Arden, and Arden's a bit more of a common hero to get the Echo on, I believe. It just mm -hmm. makes sense to have two gauntlets up. And uh, we'll have to see whether Elite 8 gets caught out as a plane. Oh, oh, there goes the Ein Cannon, hits Han Jaeger. Now Rosie, though he's about to die, official Han. Oh, there goes a the Fountain coming from Lyra, but Han Jaeger is... Oh, Han Jaeger's got distracted, but Ben now is gonna get first and no. Saved by the Imperial Sigil. Oh my god, but but you know Hunt Jaeger is greedy! Ah, oh, sorry about that. I got kind of greedy though. Yeah, I think Hunt Jaeger is kind of just stuck between a rock and a hard place, and that hard place being Baron with a rocket launcher there, just putting out all the damage. And you can see now that Baron has the items he needs with the Sorrow Blade and the Tension Bow, uh, building a bit more crit there as well. Baron's really a threat right now, but you can't forget Deity Stars because Deity Stars with the Frostburn is just going to stay on the back line and slow you down. And uh -huh. I think it's what uh, official Heim falls to now as we see them getting uh, caught up with the Flames, but it's not going to be a fair fight right Right now because if Baron's actually gonna back out that one and not help Deity Stars, maybe that's the wrong choice because Official Hind isn't out of it. it this is where Arsons have that chance. If Arsons can stick together as a team and let Baron have that window of opportunity oh. to put down the damage, but if he doesn't, he might oh. die. He manages to jump jets oh, away. He I... might even get another kill. Anyeg is going solo, is going to oh, fall oh. to the turret. He gets the double kill. He might even chase this one for the triple kill as he takes the arcane passage in, but Anime Save Me able to run away in time to deny that one. But this is why I was talking about the Baron being so strong, but you can't... Uh, they have to fight I, I actually take that back. They don't need to fight <laughs> together because Baron's so strong. Oh. Look at him just going in and doing work. But I think it's safer to fight together. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> yeah, I agree. And you know, you really can't, you, you really can't uh, help deny that. This is the time where Koshka, Koshka's uh, power spike oh, starts to fall off. off. Yeah, especially with the Baron with the Tyrant's Mongol. If, if, if in case. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure, but if in case that Baron builds another Tyrant's Monocle, oh, Koshka, when Koshka dives in, she's gonna get deleted. Mm. I, I feel like it's almost not so much where Koshka's falling off as we saw her uh, able to do enough damage on to Deity Stars easily in saying that Deity Stars with not too much defense at the moment working its way to her Aegis, however. But I think it's more so the fact that Rosimi Toasty has just gone to that point and we see him now actually picking up the Aegis. So he has the Aegis, uh, Sorrow Blade, Tension Bow, and Tyrant's Monocle. And he's now got that weapon power fusion. I'm sure they want to turn this one around as Elite 8 dive in onto their turret. 
Well, the, the, uh, the Iron Cannon misses, but they, they were able to kill Baron and Scarf now. Akashka is the only one, 1v3. Akashka will be able to back away from the No, jump set and two auto attack passive. Ah, they're converting it to an ace and a push. And this is where you see the Finn really start to work out for them into the late game where uh, it's going to be Elite 8 who had the early game and they're like, okay, we can jump in, we can be the initiators for the team fight. But then Finn's there to use the light company and make Baron a bit tankier. And Baron's kind of at this point able to just jump jets around everywhere and just put down the damage really. So I think it's time to be Arsene's game if anything. And you know, Elite 8 kind of had that moment at the start of the game where they really had to uh, push ahead, but they didn't quite get far enough as we now see Yasin's making a comeback here. Hello? Have I disconnected? <laughs> I think maybe Milski is having some issues, so I'll continue on solo casting from here until she gets back and we'll see. Uh, uh, hello? <laughs> <laughs> I hear a little cough in the background, but it looks like there's going to be the uh, forced accord use, but the echo is there and is used, so it's going to be up once more. Hopefully, Elite A have taken note of that, but it's going to be the Ion Cannon able to kill Lyra, and then Gwen is going to get pulled in by the forced accord, gets taken down, and this is Arsene's turning this one around with style, and just with great teamwork there, and you see Fountain being used at the end of that team fires for so you're getting a bit low, and you can tell that Elite 8 at this stage really needs to focus down that Baron if they want any chance of winning, but it's so hard with that Finn there for the defense, and even when they want to be the aggressors in these situations, Baron just has so much damage, and at this point in time, it's looking questionable to what exactly Elite 8 can do other than catching out uh, Hello. someone yeah, from sorry. Arson on their own. <laughs> back. Hello, welcome back. Yeah. It's okay. I got this solo casting <laughs> stuff, but now I can have a breath and hopefully I imagine you're still able to see the game, correct? Yeah, um, I am. I am. Okay, then if there's anything you'd like to talk about in terms of builds as we now see Baron actually picking up the tornado trigger. Uh, wait, not... Ah, it, that is what it's called, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Tornado Trigger. Well, at first I was expecting that um, official uh, official time, Anime City and Hunt Yeagers will close down this game early, but good job to uh, good job to Artisan for holding this off until the late game. This is where Baron and the Scar shines. Yeah, and if we look in terms of gold, it's actually being flipped around now. Arsons with gold lead at phase 7.7k over to the phase 5.9k, just slightly, but Arsons have really been able to pull back coming towards this mid game here. And it's kind of more important than the early game. The early game is important, but more so if they could make advantage of that and really snowball into the late. But it might be Roasting Me Toast again, caught out here alone, does use jump jets to get out. There's going to be forced to court and the Echo is going to be used by Finn, so it's going to be up once more. Hopefully Elite 8 taking note of that, but as saying how Arsene's really having maybe an advantage here by having the mid to late game, because that's when Kraken's up and we just know how good uh, taking this Kraken and how much of an end game kind of I guess requirement it is for Ooh, most of the Nice for a that's all official time. The skip first day, you know, official hunt actually survived with the, with the with the passage. And now DD starts done again versus by Hein Jaegers. Wow. Oh my god, did you see it? Hein <laughs> Jaegers with right? a triple kill there. It was <laughs> the initial engagement, and this was the thing. Uh, is the engagement by uh, Lyra there with the arcane passage going through and it really provided mm -hmm. an easy way for Koshka to get in there gone to Baron and Baron just got taken out instantly. I don't think that Arsons were quite ready for that as uh, Dalfa wasn't able to protect them and Baron actually trying to jump out there did get killed and then Hun Jaegers kind of making his way around to Deity Stars. No one really kept Hun Jaegers in check because there's just too much going on there and I don't think they were prepared for that. They lost the Kraken to that and they lost the turret and it's now 12 to 12 and we go back to the fact of me saying, you know, this Kraken is really going to be the end game uh, 
a requirement for these two mm. teams where we see both teams with two turrets left. They've been playing it so well up until this point. Of course, uh, Elite Eight having a bit more of the early game, but just because of that one team fight there have really brought back. As long as they can push this Kraken in, it should be a win for them, but we'll see how Arsens defend this one. Okay, I was actually it was actually a smart play coming from anime. They need to get Han Jaeger's L, but there is a force accord and they block the quibble. Now they're just helping the Kraken get the turret. Official Heim obviously prioritizing this turret and now they go in. Yeah, and oh and this Sudini starts, but you oh and oh one more jump and uh, Gwen just gets eliminated, but you know it will be this, oh this will be and Ah, uh. <laughs> uh, able what to what? defend this one, but cry the crystal so low. Ah! Anime Save is still up. It's just one more attack, and Anime Save gets oh it. God. Oh my impunity! What looked like such a turnaround from Arsens, and they did it in the last team fight. But it's oh. Anime Save from Roma left up on that team, able to take the yeah. crystal alongside Kraken. And what a game! That was so close! Yeah. If Arsens turned that around, I'm sure they would have made sure to not lose the next fight. But in saying that, they would have had an open base against the Lyra, would have still been tough to defend. But we saw yeah. Arsens really turn it around towards the mid game and played yeah. it so strong. I really wanted Arsens to win that one. It's kind of <laughs> like the underdog team coming back. And they played it so well, but in the end, Elite 8 just taking that at the last second. Thanks yeah, I think it was. Me. Yeah, it was. It, it was. I think the 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 play the main play there that is not to be ignored is that the anime saved me in, uh, passage to uh, the back line so that Han Jaegers were able to was able to burst Baron and Scarf and they were able to get that ace and then that cracking. 